Welcome one and all, this is The Peace Dealer and I would like to share a very amazing topic with you that I just came into greater understanding about and that's using your astrology chart to discern if you are on the light side or the dark side. We, we have light and dark that are both of uh, uh, polarities that are part of us. However, you know, you can find out with the astrology chart whether you focus more on the light or you focus more on the dark or whether you are the light or are the dark. Very important difference. If you're familiar with my World War Zero series, I break this down entirely and it was fairly accurate. However, there were some facets of it that are not as correct. And so I'm going to make a new episode to kind of repair and correct these dynamics and really understanding, okay, case in point, certain reflections that I made had shown that if you were earth or water, you're dark, and if you're fire and you're air, you're light. That is, that is not necessarily correct, and I'm going to go more into how to discern and decipher these energies. What's very important is your sun position and the position and relationship that the planets make and angles to that sun. That's very key knowing whether the light shines on those energies or it's in the shadow of that light will let you know if you are light or dark and with that said let's get into this and understand more how to discern if you a light sider or you're a dark sider so first of all it's important to note that everything i tell you is more of a working theory um, it's not set in stone so you very well may be the exception to the rule these are just guidelines that I've noticed uh, in my personal dealings with people that made me understand very special family dynamics some of you are pure beings of light uh, in families with just dark beings some of you like myself are actually dark beings but like your whole family is of light some of you there's a mix and match and it really helps you to understand the whole facet of the meaning of light and dark okay so it's it's so very fascinating i never even thought possible that you know this would really take a hold as strong as it does so you know know that everything i mention is still just scratching the surface there's going to be so many other indicators especially outside of the chart when you think of aspects like the meaning of your name your birthplace uh just certain facets of yourself that kind of key you in to your understanding of these energies but regardless once again you want to start at the sun Okay, the sun in your zodiac chart is so pivotal. The sun's beaming down on me right now as I uh, shoot this. That's why my brows are scrunched. But you want to look at the sun. You want to look at the moon. The rising sign is very important, but the rising sign really just gives you a perspective of how you're aware of these energies. Well, the sun is awareness, but of how you perceive these energies in a special element. So we'll get to that. But first of all, look at the sun, okay? The sun and the moon is who you are. The sun is, is the expression of your vitality and your spirit, and the moon is who you are on the inside, okay? We're gonna look at houses soon too, but when we get to elements, fire is light okay um water i used to see as dark because there are dark elements of water but water is really just water so you can have water in the light like cancer risings or like scorpio risings where you have water energy in the ninth house or you might be a scorpio sun with a cancer moon and the moon is ninth house to the scorpio sun so it's a little bit debatable here earth is really just more so a physical realm that could be expressed in light or expressed in darkness and air is not really light air if anything is rather neutral in an, in a sense for you to either judge or influence light. what am i saying um if you have a lot of light energy then the air in your chart will be more light. If you have a lot of dark energy, the air in your chart is gonna give the truth about that dark. So keep that in mind. You have to see what it's influenced, okay? 
So if you're a majority air sign or water sign, right, or earth sign, you could be on the dark side or you could be on the light side, okay? If you have fire, you are the light. This is very important, huge distinction. So let's take the sun, for example. If you have sun or moon in Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, you are the light. You either have the light that you are made up of within or your spirit sparks with light. So important here, okay? What is darkness? It's the absence of light. So it's more rare to be a dark being than it is a light being. You wanna really steer away from people's definitions of it because people think that to be a light being is to be all pure and to be happy and to be good and to be a dark being is to be an evil person, which is not true. So if you look at certain people who are not as enlightened or they're not necessarily walking the spiritual path, you may think, oh, they're a dark being when that couldn't be anything further from the truth. It, it, it makes a lot more sense and is more probable that you will be a light being. It is extremely rare to be a totally dark being like myself actually um i was able to compare and i can use my family and certain friends as an example i was able to compare my immediate family and i've seen everyone in my family has prominent places in the light and these are people who actually have a sense of what's going on in the world whereas i operate in the darkness okay my father has an airy sun and a venus in aries right my younger sister has a moon in sag a venus in sagittarius okay my mother uh, is a gemini with a, a cat moon unless she's a late sag rising or a late sag moon but i think she's a cat moon but her venus is in leo all right her uranus is in leo and my youngest sister is a cancer but her moon is in the ninth house of Gemini and her Venus is in Leo okay so all of these have prominent light positions and because they're in fire that light takes priority and this is what makes them a light being whereas my Sag moon sister and my Aries father are light beings my mom and my other sister are on the light side huge difference even though they have hearts of light whereas me every single every single aspect that uh i make in my planets falls in the dark i used to think i was light for a while until i realized that was an illusion i cast growing up in a family of light before i embraced my darkness and that doesn't mean that i'm evil you know what i mean i, mean, I don't like to think so <laughs> but that doesn't mean that i'm a bad person how do we make sense of this i am the only one in my immediate family that's the black sheep i'm the only one in my immediate family that does astrology that talks about the occult that entertains the occult my youngest sister dabbles in it a little but she's libra rising gemini moon libra balances on the scales light and dark that's why they're not light or dark it's wherever they're balancing so she'll be like iffy in and in here and there but still be skeptical objectively because it's all air but she's guided by light because it's in the ninth house so based on that example i've given you indicators to be able to tell who what's light and what's dark once again, if you have any fire, for example, I have fire, I have South Node in Leo, and I have Mars in Aries, but because everything else is predicated in dark, because my fire is in dark houses, the absence of light, on top of, you know what I'm saying, my Venus and my soul being in the 12th house and 8th house from my sun, which puts it in darkness, these are aspects that let me know I'm a dark being. So you wanna look at that. In order to discern darkness, where in your chart is there an absence of light? Is, is Leo, Aries, and Sagittarius in water houses that place them in the dark? That's the first prerequisite. My, uh, I found out my Scorpio sister is a Virgo rising. So as a Virgo rising, it places the firehouses right in in water houses but why isn't she dark as a scorpio sun because she's a sag moon so even though her light is dark it's hidden it's hidden light but she's still light keep that in mind if you have any fire sun moon you're light doesn't matter and they're light beings who are very dark it is possible to be a light being and you're a very dark person but you're still a light being okay keep that in mind so you want to look at the sun. What aspects do your planets make to the sun outside of the house? Don't, don't bring in rising sign. Pretend that your sun is your first house. So if you have um, 
let's take now Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Mercury, Venus, and Mars are not enough to decide if you're light and dark. It's just going to help you influence whether you think dark Mercury, whether you love the darker light Venus, and you have a heart of light, which is a huge determiner, and then whether your mind is, is you know, operates through light or through darkness. All right, these will influence highly what your sun and moon is, okay? So if your, if your sun and moon isn't in fire and it's in other elements, you wanna look to the relationship that the planets have to the sun to see if they're in light or if they're in dark, and this will influence you greatly. A lot of people think they're dark, but they're really not, right? A lot of people think they're light, but they may not be light like they think they do, okay? So in order to discern darkness, you, we need to look at the 12th house, the 8th house, and the 4th house. The 12th house is a hidden house. The 8th house is a mystery house. The 4th house is private. It's hidden from light. And I'm not talking about based on your ascendant. You have to look at your sun first. For example, Gemini Brown, the Leo King, and I are all 12th house Venuses, okay? However, Gemini Brown and the Leo King, their 12th house Venuses are based in light, whereas mine is based in darkness. So just because it's the 12th house doesn't mean it's dark. You need to delineate this. Here's how we will. Gemini Brown is a Gemini sun with a Venus in Leo. So even though as a Virgo rising, his Venus is in the 12th house, he's a third house Venus. Remember, you have to put the sun in priority because all the planets revolve around the sun. The sun does not revolve around any of the other planets. And don't listen to these geocentrists who make you believe that the sun revolves around the earth. That's not true. So keep that in mind because using his example, Venus in Leo, sun in Gemini, makes his heart light because it's the third house. He expresses his heart from his spirit, which is light, in the sign of Leo. And then it being in the 12th house means that his heart is of divine hidden light. Same with the Leo King. The Leo King is a Leo rising, Venus in Leo, Sun in Leo. So he's a first house Venus. You can see it on him. Very beautiful dude. Very much so extravagant in the way he expresses this, but it's based in his 12th because it's a little bit behind his rising, but it's still a light Venus. My Venus is in the 12th in Gemini, and it is the 12th house to my sun. So whereas the Leo King and Gemini Brown have it first house and third house, I have it in the shadow of my light. And then also again in Taurus in the 12th house. So this is what, even though we all have 12th house Venusian experiences, makes us, you know, actually me dark and them actually light. Very important distinction. And you could take this again with the moon. All right, if you wanna know if you are dark, you have to look at your soul as well. And if your soul makes an angle to your sun from the fourth as a opening square, not, not a closing square where it's 10th house to the sun, but fourth house, that means it's private. If it's eighth house to the sun and you have a king kunx, that means it's private. If it's 12th house and you have a semi-sextile, that means it's dark. Unless it's in fire, then it's light. If it's in air, if it's in earth, if it's in water, it's dark. But this is where you also have to take in other factors like the rising sign. Let's take my sister again, for example. She's a Gemini moon, Cancer sun, okay? Her, her Gemini moon is 12th house to her sun. So based off what I said, that would make her dark because her sh the, the, the intellect that she carries with, with her spirit of sincerity is in the dark of that Cancer Sun. But as a Libra rising, her moon is in the ninth house. So it's influenced by light, okay? So very important. My moon in Placidus is in the ninth house. So I'm influenced by light, but it's a dark soul. And what do I do? I teach people ninth house Capricorn about the dark. Eighth house Capricorn moon from Gemini Sun. I hope this is striking a chord with some of y'all, okay? Forget about outer planets. They're not really gonna determine directly, although they will take hold. You wanna really focus on everything from the sun, moon, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Mars. Venus and Mars especially, that will influence your heart 
and your action and desire, but just because you may desire the light doesn't mean you're light. Just because you desire the dark doesn't mean you're dark. You've got to look at the sun and moon. So I, I really hope this talk uh, enlightens some of you and, you know, get to looking at the chart. If you ever want a reading about this, order my astro report and put dark slash light or just ask it in the notes and I'll, and I'll look it up for you. I can examine specifically because everyone's different. This is where it's complicated. Some people are pure light. Some people are pure dark, like me. Some people are light and dark. For example, my, my cancer sister is an even balance of light and dark. And that's not a coincidence, because she's a Libra rising. So you see this in the chart, and it's so fucking amazing. It is so amazing. Really delineating like the purpose of it, right? Take a dark being like myself. I'm destined for light, because my north node is an Aquarius in the ninth. Okay, so we, we, we could really get deep with this. And I, I want to really change that in the World War Zero episode because there was truth in it, but I, I took it too logically. And, and, and I apologize to water signs because I've seen water is dark for so long, but there's a light side to water. There's a light side to every element. There's a dark side to every element except for fire because fire is light. Even though it can be influenced by dark, it's still light. So keep that in mind. Um, there's so much more I want to say, but I'm going to end this here. And y'all stay blessed as always. Bad things they say about me. In my face they act real sweet, but it's cool. I know. I know. I know. I know. I just let it go. Yeah. Got a long, hard road ahead of me. They blocking it so I can't see, but it's cool. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Here we go. Uh. Too dumb to follow rules, too smart to stay stuck I'm just here to live it up It'll be a cold day in hell before I ever give a fuck I'm hot, get off my nuts Yeah, it is what it is and what I do is such a mystery They know their history, I do dastardly deeds Whenever you see me, you probably should turn the other way Hey, I don't give a hey, uh, tumbling through the wind that's my elephant, all I do is win I ain't Khaled though, that's a Sag Archer I'm more like a sad farmer Cause I cultivate all my crops but they don't grow Wait, it must be what I sow Cause that's what I reap I swear this what the pastor don't preach Bad things they say about me In my face they act real sweet but it's cool I know I know, I know, I know, I just let it go, yeah Got a long, hard road ahead of me They blocking it so I can't see, but it's cool I know, I know, I know, I know Here we go